Hey guys, Devil War here. It's uh, November 30th. It's a soggy Monday here in Virginia. I'm going to do a video for you guys that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, it's going to be on restoring fasteners for your restoration project. And this, this method is something that I learned a long time ago and that I've been using it to restore bolts and just all kinds of things, uh, washers, uh, just certain types of pins and clips and everything. It's, it's really helped me out on my project. You know, you, you, you get a, a bolt or something and you think you can just run down to the hardware store and, and grab a few of them. And sometimes you can, but then there's sometimes that these fasteners are specific to what you're what you're using them for on the vehicle so you really need that original bolt or screw or whatever and let's face it on these cars it's 30 years old some of them aren't worth worth putting back on the car and it's an area that is in the restoration world that i think is really overlooked um, you can you can buy bolt kits from uh, different restoration sites and, and I have looked at a few of those and some of them are really good, but they're, they're still not 100%. So there, there is times that you need that original fastener. And if you have the fastener and it may be old and crusty or whatever, this video here is gonna show you how to make it look new again. And this is a process that I learned from the guys over at nastyz28.com. There's a, there's a good forum over there and a lot of good guys. There's a topic in the, one of the subtopics in the forum is called the original drivetrain topic. And all of those guys are into the, basically numbers matching all the original stuff. And, and they pretty much taught me how to do this. And so I'm gonna pass the knowledge on to you guys. We've all went to a car show and, and seen a car that looked like it had a flawless paint job on it. And you go up to the engine compartment and you see all these bolts and everything that maybe they're rusty or, or they just, they look old. They haven't been touched or anything. And we've all, we've all seen that. And personally, I think it takes away from the restoration. There's another thing we've all been guilty of, I've done it, is you take a piece of cardboard you poke a bunch of holes in it and you put all your bolts in it and you paint it. And uh, you know, that works, that works okay too. You usually get by with a little bit on that as far as a little bit of time, but first time you really put a wrench on it and torque it to spec, a lot of times on the corners, you'll crack that paint. And then what you'll find is over the years, a year or two, it'll start rusting right in that that crack where the paint is and it'll be little rust bubbles and next thing you know the whole fastener covered in rust so this uh this will help you out it's helped me out i hope you get something from it so first i want to show you the product we'll be using today and then once we do that We'll go down to the uh, shop area and I'll show you some of the tools we're going to be using. It's, it's actually a very simple process. Let's take a look. Okay guys, this is uh, the product we're going to be using today. These products I've had up on the shelf for a long time. And uh, I did put a call in to Scott Owens who is the owner of the company. This is actually settled a little bit in the bottom, but, but he said it just from setting and it should work just fine. But this is a, a parkerizing solution is what it's called. And there is the magnese and then there is the zinc. Now the magnese is going to be more of a black look. So if you have a bolt that we put in this solution, it's going to turn more black and the zinc is going to be more of a gray look and this is a concentrate and what we do is we mix we mix it up with water and like for the zinc it's got the directions right here it comes with the directions but the zinc is four ounces to a gallon of water 
and the magnese is 14 ounces to a gallon of water so we'll we'll get into uh, we'll get into doing that and uh, I'll show you exactly how it's done okay gang we're down here in the uh, shop area this is the area I've had you guys down here before used to be a uh, TV shop down here I used to work on TVs years ago you guys have been here before this is actually the place that my sandblasting cabinet is located I have two that was the original one that I originally bought and now I just have glass beads in it don't use it that much and then I have the uh, TL80 I think it's TL180 maybe by Scat Blast it's a top load and of course I know a lot of you guys have this equipment already that's why it's gonna be so easy for you to uh, to do this bolt refinishing project this sandblast cabinet does have a vacuum attached it's actually located downstairs we've got a hole drilled through the floor behind the cabinet down there and it's all on a switch so I'll just power it up got some lights built into it that I've put in and this is the best thing that I have found let me cut that vacuum off this is the best thing that I have found for blasting uh, little bolts and fasteners it's made by Scout Blast as well it was a little tall for me I couldn't really get the gun in there the sandblast gun so I actually cut it cut a section out of it welded it back together just to make it a little bit smaller because when I do that turn some light back on when I do that it just made it so much easier to get my gun down in there so that's what that's all about So, now the materials we're going to need for the job is some sort of Coleman stove. This just happened to be a standby, a stainless pot. This is just a yard sale special. It's been used a while. Stainless steel, that's what you want. This has actually got a handle busted off of it, and I took a piece of uh, round pipe, taped it to the top of what was left. It works. You got a Pyrex dish here. This would be what we actually put the WD-40 in. We'll need some WD-40. You don't necessarily need a gallon. You can use the cans. I just find it easier to, to use the gallon. Because what we'll do, we'll take our solution, we'll cook the parts in it, and as soon as we take them out, we're going to put them in the WD-40. Now, what that's going to do, like I said, this solution is mixed with water, and that's actually what WD-40 is. It's water displacement. So it's, it's going to help you get the water off. If you don't get the water off, it's going to dry with a whitish streak looking to it and it's not going to be what you want so you definitely got to have WD-40 once we get our bolts out of the WD-40 we're going to take a towel this is just a wipe off and we're going to dry them really good now once we dry them we're going to set them on another towel and we'll let them sit till the next day but we're going to coat them with this here Bow Shield T9 this is the best rust inhibitor that I have found. Again, this all came from the Nasty Z28 form. Been using it for several years. Uh, this T9 bow shield is developed by the Boeing Company. It's really good stuff. So that's the products that we're going to be using. Some of the tools we're going to be using. And the blast cabinet. Okay. Now, what we'll do, like I said, we mix, we're going to use the zinc because that's just, I have that already mixed up. The zinc is, like I said, it's four ounces of that concentrate, T9, 
to a gallon of water. So if you have a half a gallon, it's two ounces. So just get you a, uh, I recommend a paint cup, paint mixing cup, and pour two ounces of that solution in it. And if you got milk jugs, say these half a gallons work good, and get you a gallon of water or half a gallon of water to two ounces, or if you got a full gallon, four ounces, mix it up. And uh, this product, after you have used it, it can be reused, but there'll be a white, there'll be some white stuff in the, uh, you can see some of the residue there. You'll get a little bit of that residue. So what you can do is take you a coffee strainer and a funnel, and I just happen to have that right here. And you can put your coffee strainer in it, get a clean funnel, you don't want to contaminate it. And uh, just pour the leftovers back in a, a container marked for used. Now over time, as you do use the used stuff, it's it's. I have found it's not as dark of a color. It's like maybe a little lighter gray or something, but for the most part, it works just fine. Uh, the zinc, like I said, it's the gray. The manganese is the dark black, and the manganese is something you would want to use, like say, for a grill inside of a car, something that's going to be seen from the outside. Most of the time you're going to want it that black, but your suspension components or anything like that, if you want to re redo the original hardware on it, you're going to want it the zinc. You could use the black for everything, but I just like the zinc. A lot of times that, that battleship gray really looks good against the, uh, like a black, uh, chassis black frame. It really, it really pops and it, it really, the details really show up really good. Sorry about this camera, guys. It's it's having trouble focusing. Uh, like I said, hopefully, uh, maybe Santa Claus is going to bring me a new camera and we'll get a little bit better video. So I apologize for that up front. I know it's going in and out. Hopefully, you guys can still get something out of this. So the directions say, basically, you, 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 you mix up your product. Now, we're going to take our bolts we'll probably do a couple of these door bolts these are for doors on the 72 Camaro for the hinges we'll do a couple of these just as demonstration for this this uh, video but the the directions actually say the metal has to be etched for the phosphate to attach glass bead or sandblast with wash play sand from Home Depot navel jelly a pink rust remover and a number three steel wool will strip the old finish. Parts should be treated no longer than two to three hours following the etch. Important, use no cleaners or rinse after the sandblasting as this may leave a residue or spotty finish. So we're just going to do the uh, sandblasting. I have, I happen to have aluminum oxide in the uh, scat blast cabinet and that's that's pretty much all I use anymore. Like I said, if it's a uh, aluminum part, I will go to the red cabinet and I'll use the glass beads. And I have used the glass beads for this process and it works just fine. Uh, some guys will even go a step further if they're using the glass beads and they'll take a wire wheel. And they say sometimes the glass can get impregnated into the steel and you just run over it real quick with a wire wheel. I have found for my use, um, the, the aluminum oxide just, just fine. Um, there's probably other guys out there doing this same thing that's doing it just a little bit different than I am that gets the same results. So this is not an exact on how to do it. I mean, you, the product does come with its own directions, but I am showing you how I do it and we'll see the results that I get and, uh, I'm very happy with the results that I got from it. So I have tested this coating on some bolts years ago. I let several bolts set outside through the winter months, January, February, and uh, even March and into the rain there in April. And the product actually, the bolt showed no 
signs of rust. They they were, you know, they were kind of shiny because they had that coating of oil on them. But they were, they wasn't rusted. They were, uh, they had dulled a little bit from where I had initially done it. But what I did, I just put another uh, swipe of that bow shield on it, dried it real good. They looked exactly like the day that I did it. So on a restoration project uh, that's not going to see the weather anyway, I think this coating will last a long time. I, I've done several for people uh, around my hometown. And uh, like I said, their cars is garage kept. So, but but even over the years, they, they say they still look as good as uh, the day we did it. So, and it doesn't hurt, you know, when you're doing regular maintenance, it doesn't hurt to keep just a little bit of this and and put over the head of the bolt just to, just to fight off rust. So we all fight rust <laughs> in this hobby, that's for sure. So like I said, that being said, let's get on with the video. I uh, will be wearing a dust mask. Uh, I don't really think, like I said, most of this stuff is water. Um, the one thing that I will not be doing, it, the instructions tells you to use a cake thermometer that measures up to 200 degrees. Now, the heat you want to heat this solution to 200 to 205 degrees, and I used to do that. I had a I had a couple of those thermometers, and I've broke them over the years using them and i found out you know water begins to boil at 212 i think if i remember from school and i found out when you start seeing the bubbles on the very bottom of this pan that you're getting pretty close to the 212 so when i start seeing it just start to boil not not boiling but when i start to see those bubbles start to form i know it's time to drop the parts in there and you'll see that on camera uh, don't let the solution boil. If it does start to boil, I just pick it up. I pick the pot up from the, the heat source and I wait till it uh, till it quits and then I'll, I'll uh, drop it back down. I've got a pair of long needle nose pliers here that we'll be using to uh, get the parts out of the solution and dip into the uh, WD-40. And I think that's all. Like I said, I, I won't... I won't really, I don't, I've never had any trouble doing this. I do wear a mask. Uh, don't stand directly over the pot and just inhale everything, but but I do have a mask on when I'm doing it. So a lot of guys that come into the shop here and they'll, they'll see this pot and this this uh, Coleman set up here and they'll say, what are you doing down here? Cooking math or something? <laughs> no, I can assure you we're not doing that. But they do wonder what in the world's going on down here. <laughs> so anyway, let's get started. I'm going to start, we're going to get started by sandblasting these two bolts. And uh, bring you guys along for just a little bit of that. And then we'll, we'll give them a good coating. Okay, we're getting ready to do the sandblasting. And uh, I'll probably just use, i got a pair of channel locks in there. And I'll probably just, since we're just doing two bolts, I'll use that to, uh, to blast the bolts. But if I had a large, uh, usually a handful, especially small ones, I'll use the uh, scat blast uh, blasting, blasting bowl, I guess you'd call it. I'll use, use that. Now, some very small bolts, I have used a strainer before. Just, they'll stick down in one of the smaller holes and I'll, I'll blast. So let's get started. I need to get a new screen. I haven't done a lot of blasting down here this year. Like you guys have seen, most of our stuff is on the Camaro now is body work. Alright, 
let's check it. Alright, the washer was froze up on it, and there's just one little place there that I'll have to get where the washer had slid down. I can't stress this enough on this part of the process. This bolt has to be absolutely clean. Um, if you have to, if it's got gunk in the threads, you can take it out and run a wire wheel over it. But the, the bolt has to be absolutely clean. Now right here is just a little bit of rust where the washer was down. I don't think I got enough light to show it. And maybe right in there. But it, it has to be clean. So I'll have to hit this again. And usually what I do, if I got a bunch of bolts to do, I do what I do, call the initial blasting and I'll, I'll blast them all and then and then I really go over them if say I'm not going to coat them the next day I'll, I'll blast them again just to final blast them but so like I said this this has to go back in it has to be 100 percent clean even in all the corners and everywhere and this is what I'm talking about about a specialized bolt for example let me get something to point with you've got certain head markings that's on the bolt it's got a built-in washer not only is it a washer but it's got these little teeth here that will grab into the metal and of course you've got your thread your length but look here you have I don't know what the technical term of this part is but if you just run down to the hardware store you can find something that's going to work I'm sure but it's it's not going to look exact so you know these threads are probably going to come all the way out to here it's I don't have any just laying around but but you get what I'm talking about this is a specialized bolt meant for the hinges on a 70 to 73 probably 70 to 81 Camaro so let's put this back in we'll blast it up really good I gotta get the other one done and then I'll bring you back okay guys I'm back got the two bolts blasted and let me just say I didn't I didn't I didn't mention anything about air compressors, but if you have a blast cabinet or you're planning on getting a blast cabinet, you must have a good size air compressor. Um, I'd say a five horse, 60 to 80 gallon unit is the minimum. Uh, mine is a 80 gallon, five horse Ingersoll ran. And when I first got it, it kept up with the cabinet. It would actually keep up and cycle. But over the years, I've noticed it, it it just maintains now. So, and I've had it probably uh, seven or eight, nine years, something like that. So, that goes without saying. If you're going to do sandblasting, just know you've got to have a big compressor. So, okay, with that out of the way, I've got our two bolts sandblasted. Like I said, they have to be perfect metal just as clean as you can get them now is the time to inspect the bolts inspect the threads uh, you can see here this one hopefully this is showing up it's got really good threads this one the head of it looks really nice there's no pitting I'm going to bring you back. The camera battery is about to die. Okay, I had to switch batteries. 
So as I was saying, the, there's no pitting. The head of this bolt is really nice shape. This other bolt is a different story. It has a dent in it. So this may be something you might want to get another one for or maybe put it in a place where it's not going to be as visible on the car. But this is the time to inspect your bolts. Now, let's take a look at a couple of these other bolts here. Let's take a look at some candidates that, that didn't make it to the solution. For example, I don't remember what this was on. It may have been backing plate bolts. But you can see, hopefully you can see the threads. There are some places that it's just gone. Not even there. And this was actually a bolt that you could run down to the hardware store and get. Just a fine thread bolt. But like I said, the, this severe pitting and the threads are gone. This would be a bolt that you would not want to use. Um, and then, like I said, there's, there's specialty bolts that goes along with your project. And I have just a couple examples of those like this short bolt with a built-in washer. And then same thing here is a short bolt with a star bit. These are specialty bolts that are used on the hood latch assembly on the 72 Camaro. Actually probably 70 to 73. But you can see how they have a star patterning on the head of it. You can see the unique head markings of the bolt. And you can see how it comes to a certain point at the end of it. So this, this bolt is the reason why you would want to be able to restore it. Um, and a lot of the bolts are actually in good shape once you get them blasted. This bolt here it could be blasted and coated and be just fine. So that's, I mean, that's a perfect example. I have a whole box of bolts that, bolts and fasteners that haven't really made it to the solution. But I'm fortunate enough that the guy that used to deal in these Camaros, the, the guy that actually owned my car before I got it, when he got out of the Camaros, he had coffee cans full, Maxwell House coffee cans, the metal ones, just full of bolts and fasteners. So I'm fortunate enough that if I have, you know, a bolt basically not make it through the blast cabinet that I can go down and, and dig a little bit and hopefully I can find one. The restoration places, I know you can buy some of them, but even even then they're a little bit different. Uh, we've all ordered something from the big restoration houses and we get it in. It's not quite what we expected. It's just a little bit different, stuff like that. So let's get started with the uh, coating process. That's what we're waiting on, right? Okay guys, I just poured the solution into the pot and uh, put my mask on. I gotta get my WD-40 ready. So let me pour some of it in. This uh, Pyrex dish that we have. And I'll reuse it, it's got a lid on the Pyrex dish. Right there's the WD-40. And when we get done, I'll just put the lid on it, set it off to the side. Eventually that WD-40 will get a sludge to it and it'll be done. But like I said, it don't take much. We're just wanting to displace the water. All right, here we go. I'm 
Gonna let that heat up. Like I said, what we're waiting for is to see this stuff just start to boil. Now this is the zinc, so it should be a battleship gray. Now actually for these, these particular bolts here, I mean, if I was actually planning on using these bolts, I'd probably do them in the black since they are for the door hinges and they'll be seen when you open it up. But, or actually, I think a lot of these, a lot of these may have been painted, you know, the head of it. So, so you can see the solution here, hopefully. Let's see if I can get a better view for you guys. Hopefully you're seeing that. I want that stuff just to start to come to a boil. Just had enough time to check my email. <laughs> if you can boil water, you can use this process. And like I said, if you don't feel comfortable by watching the bottom of it, watching the bubbles, I, I used a thermometer for years, and the instructions said 200 to 205 degrees is what you're looking for. And right, we're right close. You can just barely see those bubbles starting to starting to uh, form. I guess if you had a uh, panel, panel panel thermometer too that would work. I've got one of them up there in the garage. Could have probably brought that down and that would work just fine too. A lot of you guys probably have that. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump them in right now. And you're gonna notice they're gonna start fizzing. Take my needle nose pliers. Just kind of move them around a little bit while they're fizzing. Still fizzing. You can see the bubbles. The solution is starting to boil. We're going to raise the heat, raise it up from the heat just a little bit, keeping it just under the uh, boiling temperature. Cooking some bolts. Looks like they're doing just good. I don't know what the set time is. I usually just 
tell they quit fizzing. I mean, they'll fizz for a long time, but you know, they're pretty much looking pretty good now. I know some guys use like a vegetable strainer to do this. I think they're pretty good now. So we'll cut the heat off. Bring you guys in for a look. They're still sitting there fizzing pretty good. Looks like alka seltzer. Okay, so now we want to get them dipped in our WD 40. So I'm simply just going to take them out. And like I said, I want to displace the water off of them fairly quickly. Drop them in. Take them out. Drop it in. And you almost need two, two sets of these pliers because uh, I'll just use a little set to get them out. I, you don't, like I said, you don't want to contaminate your solution. So the next thing I'm going to do is just put them on this white ball. There we go. And I'm just going to dry them. Just going to give them a good drying. And this is kind of a pretty rough paper towel. It's, it's, like I said, it's a white ball. I have used the blue shop towels before. They work just fine. The ones made by Scott. Um, I just don't think you'd want to use anything like Bounty or something. Uh, I've been using some Brawny up there in the garage. And, I mean, they, they probably would work okay for this. I mean, something that's not a lot of lint. And, and uh. But yeah, there it is. I mean, they're, they're coated nice. Now what we'll do is go ahead and put our lid on our WD-40 because we're not going to need it no more. Set it over here where I keep it. And... Get you guys in the view. Gonna take a little bit of our bow shield T9. And I'm just gonna give these things a good coating. It's not gonna take a lot. And I'm basically gonna let this dry on there. And that's it. A little white dab off the excess. And like I said, once this stuff dries, the, the bolts always look better the next day after this stuff is dried on there a little bit. But 
just give you guys a little example. This is the gray. Um, some bolts turn a little bit more grayer than others. It just depends on the metal, I think. Like these, these are a little bit darker gray than what I'm used to seeing on the, the zinc. They probably almost look black in the camera. But I'll show you some bolts that I've already got done. They're looking black in the camera, but they are kind of a gray. So we'll let that sit there. And uh, like I said, I want to show you, I want to show you guys some bolts that we already have done up there for the Camaro project. So we're going to let these bolts just go ahead and sit. I usually let them sit for a day. And uh, we'll go up to the garage and I'll show you some bolts that I already have done. Um, and when you're installing these bolts, uh, like I said, the threads, the threads are just like they're, they are when there's no coating at all on them. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, if you put an impact on the head of this bolt and you mar the corners, meaning you you or a wrench if you strip a if you put a wrench on it and you start to strip the bolt and you move the metal it will damage the coating it's going to damage the bolt but it'll damage the coating as well so just be aware of that um but what i have found usually is a, a by hand and even with a torque wrench the bolts are just fine once you install them and I'll show you some bolts that are installed um, I have used this process on powder coating uh, say for example I'll give you an example um, upper control arms the shaft that goes through the upper control arms through the bushings I powder coated that black and of course each end is threaded well what I wind up doing is I did this process on the threads and I've actually skipped the WD-40, and it, it came out okay. Um, yeah, I didn't want to, since I was going to be doing the powder coat, and I didn't want to get any of that WD-40 on the raw metal. And uh, I've, I've done it that way. And just, of course, then you just tape up the threads and then coat your part. And then after the part is coated, I have went back and added the uh, the bow shield to it. And I'll show you that. That's That'll be up in the garage. So anyway, I'll bring you back. Okay, YouTube, we're back up here in the garage and uh, I'll show a few of these fasteners on the front end of the uh, 72 Camaro project, Project Overkill. And these have been done a long time. Um, probably 10 or 11 years. That's how long I've had the car. It's one of the first projects I did with the car was rebuilt the front end and they look just like I did them. So let's take a look. I'm not sure how well the, the lighting is going to show up. That is the bolts for the steering box. There's the bolts. And these are all zinc. That's the bolts for the uh, idler arm. I've, al I've already got the bolt on. But this shaft... It's all dusty, but this shaft has been powder coated and you can see the zinc on the threads coming through and that's been zinc plated. That's the zinc phosphate. Over there in that box is a box full of uh, bolts. Okay guys, here's that bag that had the reverse lockout linkage stuff. Got two different springs. They look just as good as the day I did them. Um, I even did a Carter pin. That's a spring-loaded washer. 
Again, specialty fasteners that are hard to come by. For example, all that's been done. Um, let me open this bolt, this bag here that says uh, TH shifter hardware. There's a specialty spacer. Now they could use another coating of oil on them. Like I said, these things have been done a long time. Of course, they've all been inside too. But like I said, I, I, I did do that test. Let me grab some front end bolts. Be right back. Okay, here's a bag of that's labeled lower valence and RH fender bolts. It's gonna be fun figuring out where all these go. A lot of them's the same. But like I said, they could probably use them just another coating of oil. Some of these have been on the car for a while out here in the shop while that was being worked on and, and they're dirty because that, that oil did collect some of the dust. But this is more the black, the magnese. There's a small one. I've got pictures of all this stuff on the computer. Got it backed up to different hard drives. There's another one. That's the magnese. I don't know how much time I've got invested in uh, redoing bolts, but I've got quite a bit. It's a lot of parts, been sandblasted, powder coated, um, and some of these same techniques for the bolts used on those used in that process as well. So. I'm hoping this helps you in your restorations. It sure has helped me. Like I said, I just wanted to pass that information on to you guys. Um, I put the links below for to get the products where you can get them. And if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to, to send me a private message here on YouTube or in the comments. Just write your question down and I'll respond quick as I can. Try to think if there's anything else I needed to say to you guys. Probably think of it as soon as I cut the camera off. But, but it's really helped me and I think it's going to help you take your restoration to the next level. Like I said, it's a pet peeve of mine. I'm always looking at fasteners and everything. And there's just some fasteners that the only the only part that will work was the original part because that's the way the, you know, the company designed it. You know, the gen like in my case, there's, there's certain bolts, just like that reverse lockout linkage, that's the way GM designed it to work. So it's got to have those fasteners for it to work properly. And uh, so this, this process helps make those fasteners look new again. And maybe one thing I'll, I'll add is if you're doing the solution and, and you get one bolt that doesn't turn out that good, um, maybe it didn't take right or something, you know, dry it off, throw it back in the blast cabinet, do it again. I've had to do that before. Um, and then again, like I said, the certain types of metal will turn darker gray than others or darker black than others. So, and I don't fully understand that. I'm not a chemist. Uh, so there's just, just certain things about it you'll learn as you do it. And, um, and also to reiterate, there's probably guys out there doing this same thing, just a little bit different. Maybe they're getting the same results, but this is how I do it. And I'm happy with the results I get. 
So that's all I got. I'll get this video uploaded. Been wanting to do it for a long time. Uh, tr try to show you guys. Um, got a lot of stuff done for that project. You guys hadn't even seen yet, and this was one of them. Um, like I said, most of the videos that I have on the Camaro so far has been panel replacement, and we got a lot more of that to come. So we're just just started getting into that. But anyway, guys, that's all I got. Uh, I'd like to thank you for all the support. I'd like to thank everybody that uh, subscribed to the channel. Uh, stay tuned. I got a lot more good videos to come. Some I got a lot more things to show you that uh, I haven't touched on this year just because of uh, what we're working on with the project right now at its current state. But uh, there's a lot more to do. So, like I said, I thank all my subscribers. You guys comment. Let me know what you think. And I hope this video helps you. Thanks.